So we're just going to go over um, uh, the topic for today is, is getting some data from a website and uh, generating a professional graph. And so the only output from today is going to be for you guys to upload your outputted graph. And, and for today, since that's just the whole idea, I'd love it to be professional and awesome and kick butt, but it's basically I want to make sure you know how to go through the, the gross steps. So as long as you submit a graph and it's actually really a graph, you're 100% you're points today. Cool? All right, so now um, I'm going to run through this really quick, and then, then um, we'll have more time, and I'll call up the websites and stuff. Uh, and, but I just want to go over thing, at things at the high level. Um, also, once we get to actually doing stuff, I'd like you guys to pair up with your buddy, your, your uh, Scoop It buddy, so you can at least meet them. And you guys can do this as a buddy team. So you, you can do it individually if you want, but it's also cool to just do it as one, as one group. And if you want to do it on your own, each of you guys on your own, that's totally cool. So you can see the steps, but you need not do that. You, your buddy team just needs to submit one thing. Cool? So we'll, ki we'll kill a couple birds uh, with a single <coughs> stone here. All right. So uh, part of what we do in ESRM is making sure that we understand the problem. Part of what we do in ESRM is making sure we can communicate that, that situation or a solution or whatever. So it's not just enough that you guys know the information or know the data. That's obviously key. But it's also important for you guys to be able to communicate it effectively and, uh, and, and eloquently and stuff, right? So that, that's our first step today. We're going to get some random data that we haven't really talked about yet. And you guys are just going to mess with it and, and uh, present it uh, in a professional matter. Cool? All right. So let's talk about doing that. Um, so the goals for today are to, and also, is this lighting okay? Do you guys want me to dim the lights a little bit? Is this cool? Good? Okay. All right. So the goals for today are to um, just explore a coastal data set, very simple data set, um, and then do something, tweak it a little bit. And so that's going to involve you guys sucking that into um, some type of spreadsheet. Could be Excel could be Google Sheets, it doesn't, doesn't really matter at this point, but something you can manipulate the data with. And then once you've manipulated it and gotten into a, a nice neat, neat pattern or neat uh, layout, you're gonna suck that into some graphing program. I'm gonna encourage you, to, you guys to use Plotly, but if you have some other preferred uh, you know, graphing tool, uh, it doesn't matter as long as you can make a professional graph. But Plotly is a free, open, uh, not open source, but it's a free um, way for you guys to make graphs. And so you need not uh, pay for anything. And it'll work on any platform, any browser. Uh, and, then, and then you'll mess around with the options in Plotly or whatever your, your graphing tool of choice is. And then output a, a graphic. That's it. Sound good? All right, so here are those steps. Um, so just to have something to talk about that we'll talk about more in depth on on Friday, um, but let's just talk about hey, what's what's going on with coastal versus inland, or if you wish, how does how does a particular coastal population change over time? And uh, so so our, op, our our overriding question here for this particular exercise is is how how quickly have things been changing basically? In this case, number of people. How quickly have people been changing? Now you can get that from uh, literature and type data in. You can get that from other people's data that they've assembled, but increasingly, um, for issues that, re that, that, are, that are key, really, really important management challenges, there's, there are a growing number of tools online, and increasingly, there's data that's already available. Now, that's not necessarily in the format that's perfect for you with your specific question, but um, uh, this never used to be an option, and now increasingly, there's more and more options. Whenever we look at data from wherever, published source, online source, whatever, we should be a little skeptical. Let's make sure we know where the data came from and all, all that good stuff. But for today's activity, that's not really the goal of today's activity. Today is more like the logistics of how we do it. So I'm just going to point you to some sources. Uh, so the first one is obviously to find the data. And so there's various ways you can do that through our, our campus databases, through exploration, etc. Um, uh, doing a Google, Google search isn't necessarily bad, but that won't that that oftentimes will not be the most efficient way to find stuff and it won't be necessarily the most rigorous way to find robust, peer-reviewed, high-quality data. But in any event, we're going to go through some exercise. You're going to go through some steps, whatever those steps may be, find your data or find what might be useful data. Um, in this case, uh, I'll put this back up in a second. Uh, here's a link that I already found some data for you. I actually emailed this link to you just, just before we started class. 
So once we get back to this in a, in a minute, you can either type this in by hand or you can just go to your email and, and click on the link. But in any event, take it to this place. In this particular uh, format of data, it's actually prepped and, and made to be as easy as possible for folks like you to do stuff with it. And this is the, our, our um, from NOAA's National uh, Ocean Economy Project. And uh, so it's all set up. So you can, in this case, there's lots of different options. You can tick this, untick that, select these years, not unselect those years, et cetera. And you can either choose to, as many of these programs can, uh, view the data right there, either in tabular form, or if it is a geospatial data set, maybe view it on a map right there in, in another window. Or you can download the data so that you can manipulate it in your offline GIS or your offline graphing program or whatever. That's what we're going to do. And so you, you get that data and you do stuff. Most of the time, most of the time, just, just uh, finding that stuff online isn't necessarily going to meet our specific need or the task that I'll give you or, or the requirement of the research project. And so you're going to need to do some amount of manipulation, either um, that you have to do or that will just make your life a, a lot easier, right? Deleting a bunch of these unneeded rows that won't, that won't corrupt the data thing and make you have to do a bunch of changes later. So usually there's going to be some amount of trimming or, or editing or cleaning or transforming or something of the data uh, for, for ease of use and, and uh, most effective analysis. And uh, so here's an example. This is a data set that I also just emailed you. In this case, this particular data set comes from the U.S. Census. And uh, as, as the census guys love to do it, it's, it's, it's you know, all this tabular data and it's great, but there's all these weird spaces and things. And it turns out in this case, this row right here, Alameda County, this is, this is statewide data. Alameda County data is on this row. And then um, cities within Alameda County are in this row. And here's the years, right? So, so in staring at it for a minute or two, you can kind of figure out what's going on. But if you want to go make a graph of, say, counties over time, that's not the best format, right? It'd be a little messy. You could, but it takes some time. Much easier to download this file, you know, resort the data the way you want it to, and maybe delete a bunch of columns you don't need or rows you don't need, and then save that. Uh, you know, edited version of the data and then use that as the thing to import into your program. Virtually always you're going to need to do some amount of cleaning and at a minimum that's going to involve typically for the types of programs that we're going to be using um, the top few rows at a minimum. So generally speaking the top row is, the, is taken um, as the label for that particular data. Most of the programs we use consider that uh, replicates go down. So this would be, in the, if we're talking about time, this would be time one, time two, time three, right? So let's say maybe the x-axis. And then things that would go on the y-axis would be here. And it's going to look for the, the label of this, in this case, maybe year. It's going to look for that in the topmost row. So in this case, we have you know, this, this long name here, and then there's gaps, and then this and that. So that's confusing. So at a minimum, we probably want to delete those top those, those, those top rows that aren't just pure labels and get our file into a nice clean state so when we do import it, it imports uh, nice and smoothly. Cool? All right. Uh, and then once we import that data, we're going to take it into the tool. Today we'll, we'll play with Plotly, but um, if you have another favorite program, I'm not going to require you to use Plotly if you don't want to or, or don't like it or have something better. Um, but but you're going to suck it in. And with all these programs, if you've not used them before, like Plotly, they're going to at first seem a little like pain in the butt. Well, I don't know how to do this. How do you do that? And it, and it honestly just takes a little bit of exploring and playing around for you know, a bit, half hour, hour, to figure out how to tweak the whatever variable you'd like to tweak. The spacing of the tick marks, the color of the lines, size of the fonts, all that stuff. Cool? And then uh, later on the semester, we'll actually be, in some cases, taking our, our figure and posting it inside an electronic document, posting it inside a web page. In other cases, we'll be just creating a static figure like a JPEG or a PNG or a PDF. And that's what we're doing today. Today we're just making an export of the, of the image. Sound good? All right, cool. This is what a Plotly looks like. 
uh, or, the, or I should say this is a figure created with Plotly, and, um, and that's the, the browser thing we'll be playing with.